Which antenna is better, a Wolf River Coils or a ham stick? We're gonna find out today on K at MRD Radio Stuff. What's happening guys? I get this question a lot, which antenna is better, the Wolf River Coils or the ham stick? We just talked about it on a recent Mailbag Monday, and while I hypothesized one versus the other, I wanted to come out here and do an actual experiment. So, uh, trying to keep all things equal and scientific method and everything, uh, we're, we're just doing this on the car. We're using the Diamond K400 mount. That way I can just easily swap the antennas. We're also looking at the SWR. Now, while I can uh, get the SWR a bit lower on the Wolf River coils because it's a little bit more flexible, uh, the SWR on the ham stick was about 1.37-ish or so. So I went ahead and made the SWR uh, pretty much the same on the Wolf River coils for these uh, transmissions. And we're going to use Whisper for this. And what I did is... I transmitted for two minutes, received for two minutes, transmitted for two minutes, received for two minutes on one antenna. Then I switched the antennas, transmitted for two minutes, received for two minutes, transmitted for two minutes, received for two minutes. Did that two times, so we've got basically four transmissions and four receives on each antenna. And we're gonna compile the data and we're gonna see if there's any real uh, differences between the two aside from the glaringly obvious. Now the Wolf River Coils is designed to be a multi-band antenna where the ham stick is a single band. So you get one ham stick, one band. You want multiple bands, you're buying multiple ham sticks. Also, the Wolf River Coils has a longer whip. Now, to combat the differences, I used the Silver Bullet Mini, and I also used the shortest whip that you can get with the Wolf River Coils, which is a 78-inch whip. This would be the Soda Special if you go to their website. Now, the radiating element on the Wolf River Coils is still gosh, twice as long as the radiating element is on the ham stick. But when you compare them standing up side by side, the ham stick is actually slightly taller than the Wolf River Coils in this configuration. So trying to keep everything as apples to apples as I can. We're also only focusing on one band in this test. I'm just doing 20 meters because I find 20 meters to be a very reliable band to do these types of things on. So by no means is this a full, complete, comprehensive test. But I want to get a snapshot of what these antennas look like compared to one another. We're using the ICOM 705 hooked up to the $60 laptop using WSJTX. We've already checked to make sure the SWR between the both antennas is, is very, very similar. And I also check the ALC to make sure we're not overdriving and make sure everything's uh, copacetic each time we change the antenna. Transmitting with 5 watts, let's take a look and see what kind of data we get out of these antennas. Let's look at some numbers. Are you guys excited? Let's take a look. So I divided this up. We've got hamstick on transmit, hamstick on receive, Wolf River Coil transmit, and Wolf River Coil receive. So looking at the hamstick, I started with that on transmit. And uh, in the four transmissions that we got, uh, we were heard by 293 stations with an average signal report of minus 8.22 dB. The closer to zero, the higher the signal report is in this case and an average distance of 1,908 kilometers. Now, when we were receiving, we heard 52 stations with an average of minus 14.9 dB and an average distance of 1,470 kilometers. Looking at the Wolf River coils, we, uh, on transmit, we were heard by 299 stations, a little bit more, and our average signal to noise ratio actually went down a little bit to minus 10. And uh, we were heard by a little bit further out, 1,949 kilometers. And then looking at the Wolf River Coil on receive, we heard 57 stations with an average signal to noise ratio of minus 17.09 and an average distance of 1,441 kilometers. So what does that look like altogether? Well, it looks very much the same. There's not a lot of difference between the two. Interestingly though, if we look at this signal to noise ratio, remember the closer to zero or the lower number uh, is the better number. So minus 8.22 versus minus 10.07. The hamstick actually uh, was heard better than the Wolf for recoils, which was really surprising. And uh, it heard better, so minus 14.9 versus minus 17.09. So, uh, and with it, you know, 1949 to 1908 in terms of kilometers of distance transmitted 
1441 and 1470 in terms of distance, uh, average distance of the stations that we heard. So, you know, we can we can kind of look at these numbers and you can you can dive real deep into them if you if you want. And you can say, well, this had a, a, a higher signal to noise ratio because it was getting out further. So some of those further stations might not have heard it as well. And, and that kind of dropped that number down a little bit. However you want to look at it. Uh, but at the end of the day, 8 dBs to 10 dBs is less than uh, uh, one S unit uh, or less than a half of an S unit on your meter. And same here, 14.9 versus 17. So, you know, this isn't a huge pool of data here, but it's still data. It's, it's, it's reproducible data that anyone can go out and do. And it really shows kind of what I was thinking that they're both loaded vertical antennas and I would expect them to act uh, similarly. Now, I understand this is only on 20 meters and people are probably going to be prone to chiming in saying, well, you didn't do it on this band or you didn't do it on this band or you should have used this whip or you should have done this, you should have done that. That's beside the point. I want to keep everything as consistent as possible. Now, obviously, the Wolf River Coils is more robust and uh, versatile. Obviously, you have the collar that goes up and down. It's designed to be a multi-banded resonant antenna. The other thing that it has going for it, while I used the shortest whip for uh, that Wolf River Coils sells, you can swap out different whips. So longer whips should get you out farther and I would imagine the results would would start to stray a bit once we compared a stock uh, hamstick versus you know if we went up to the size whip that comes with the silver bullet 1000 that's uh, quite a few feet longer than that so maybe we'll have to revisit these uh, or, or keep uh, keep on this data and, and do some more tests but the bottom line is they both get you on the air and they both hear and transmit very similarly in this configuration. So that's kind of what I wanted to show. And uh, that's about all I got for you. So if you find this kind of stuff useful, hit that uh, thumbs up, hit the subscribe, follow me on Twitter at KNMRD, and you can support the channel at patreon.com slash KNMRD radio stuff. In the meantime, I hope to see you again on another episode of KNMRD radio stuff. 73 guys.